Hello guys, in today's tutorial we're going to look at how we can create an audio recorder using just HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And since this is going to be uh, a long tutorial otherwise, if I write this everything by hand, I'm just going to copy paste some sections and go into detail and explain what I have did there. Uh, because there's obviously no point in looking at me writing the code and saying mmm for like 40 minutes <laughs> and not really explaining anything and uh, having to struggle with basically writing the code perfectly the first time. So uh, without further ado, uh, let's just dive, uh, dive right in and uh, create our HTML um, document with a doc type of HTML. Okay, HTML, HTML. Okay, uh, and if you're uh, wondering, okay, but how am I going to learn if, uh, if you're just going to copy paste some blocks of uh, code? Well, um, the link is in the description with the uh, code you're going to use and need to uh, run this yourself. Um, so really, there's no need to actually go into uh, the struggle of uh, hanging on for 60 minutes until I write everything by hand. Uh, you, you can just uh, use portion, portions of the code that you need. Um, and I'm just going to explain uh, just a few neat tricks here and there as we go along. So first off, let's set the title in the head element. Uh, so this is an audio recorder. Okay, let's set uh, inline styling. So it's ready for us a little bit later. Okay, uh, we're not going to include any JavaScript just yet. I'm going to include them when we need them. Okay, uh, inside of the body element, let's just define uh, a holder. And controls with the at custom attribute data role which can be uh, selected using square brackets in CSS. Um, and the controls is only going to have one button, which is the record button. And it should be visible right now. There it is, the record button. And we're also going to have a recordings um, holder beneath our controllers. Uh, so the recordings is going to hold our ad audio files after they have been uh, generated. So for starters, we're just going to make sure that the body um, is vertically centered using display flex, justify content center, align item centers with height 100% and an absolute positioning. Now we're going to make the holder for the button uh, look great using a gradient but this is not yet visible because we haven't really customized uh, anything yet uh, and there's not much uh, content here um, let's define the styling for the button and i'm going to go into just a little bit of detail over here so the the button is positioned uh, to the center um, of our holder with uh, margin left right set to auto it has no outline uh, which it would have had uh, if we uh, let it set. So if we delete the outline equals to none, what happens is that when you press the button, it gets this uh, blocky square outside of it. That, that's not a margin, that's not a border, that's an actual outline. So it's a different rule, outline set to none. So it's a block element, uh, no, bar no border, a uh, gradient for the background, uh, width and height of 100%, a border radius of 50% so it becomes a circle. Uh, text indent, this part is quite fun and I'm going to show it to you. Um, so there you have it, if you uh, set the text indent to minus 1 EM, the, the uh, rec record text um, shifts to the left uh, um, accordingly and if we set this to something like a hundred or a thousand it goes entirely off screen so the text uh, isn't hidden with I don't know color transparent it's uh, basically thrown out of the page and this is a cute method you can use anytime to just um, remove text from blocks where you don't want text to be visible uh, without actually setting any colors for that block okay because you could have used um, 
obviously a transparent color and for the box shadow we've set an in uh, <laughs> sorry i'm trying to make this fast we've set an inset um box shadow and two outline rings the first one is white which is 30 pixels um wide and the second one is 35 pixels which leaves five pixels for the outer um gray rim which has this 333 color let's set it to red so it's more visible so this outer rim is five pix five pixels because it's actually beneath the first um rule that sets an outer rim or a box shadow of 30 pixels now let's set it back to 333 because that looks better and since we want this to act like a button we're going to uh, define the hover state for the button when we um, set the mouse over it I want the color to change slightly so it does so I could have used the filter for instance to uh, change the saturation or something like that but I think this is uh, better because it's uh, way more compatible with um, multiple browsers okay um, now we want to store the state where the button is pressed so when you press this button once it starts recording your audio and when you press it again it stops but when it's pressed we need to show uh, a red coloring so let's say we've had we have defined data recording equals true on this button let's set it here equals true when the user has clicked the button and now it becomes red so you know your um, browser is listening to you and recording your audio okay let's remove this uh for now okay uh and now for the recordings row which is right here this is going to contain something like so I'm going to add it just for now and I'm going to remove it later. It's going to contain a div with the class row and inside is going to have an audio element again uh, with controls controls hmm finally okay <laughs> and an anchor element uh, to download the actual file and the anchor element is going to uh, have a custom HTML character inside of it which looks like a downward pointing arrow so this looks more like a download uh, button so this is the actual layout the recordings row will have and now let's style them uh, quite quite quickly so going back to the style.css we're going to set um, for our row with height auto and uh, padding so everything is uh, separated from the edges and set the display to block this is useless so setting the display to block on a div element is basically nothing the element uh, has a display type of block already because it's a div okay um, so let me correct that and now uh, obviously set the outline to uh, none to the audio element itself because it has the same problem the button used to have earlier uh, and now let's stylize uh, the actual anchor so it looks like a button so the anchor itself is implicitly an inline element so we've changed it to inline block and the important thing is uh, we floated it to the right so it stays here we set uh, obviously some coloring uh, to white the border radius uh, a nice uh, gradient and now we want it to act like a button so when we hover over this element i want to change the text decoration which is this uh, small underline here this is actually a happy accident so when you hover over the element the underline styling disappears so the text decoration is set to none when you're hovering over the anchor and we also need to make it look like a button and we do so by defining an active state for this anchor and the active state says that the gradient which is the same we've we used earlier shifts to 180 degrees so it seems like the button is pressed so this is an anchor that looks and acts like a button and let's set a cursor to pointer to to this anchor um, so it looks like a an actual button okay cursor okay and now we have a pointer cursor when hovering over it and not just a standalone default uh, text selector or or anything like that okay so this is for the styling and i know i've gone through this very very quickly but it's really not important that you watch me uh, fumble around trying to um, write this from scratch it's important to note the um, 
the tricks which were the text indent part, uh, some gradients here and there, uh, the margin set to 50% which makes the block look circular and stuff like that. And if you want to go into further detail, uh, links are in the description below. And now let's include some scripts. We're going to need jQuery because I love this library. I don't know why it gets so much hate lately. And we're going to use a recorder.js, which is a script I didn't write, but I'm hosting it on the site, so it's always there for these tutorials, because God knows what happens to other hosting sites that keep this JavaScript file. So it's stefino.github.io slash this slash recorder.js. This is the um, basically a kind of framework that handles interaction with the browser and um, exports our uh, WAV files, because we need that. And now I'm going to basically copy paste, and I know this looks ugly, but I have to do this. Copy paste the JavaScript part <laughs> of, um, of our tutorial, and we're going to go through it line by line. And I think this is actually better. I'm going to copy paste it here. Okay. So the, the script is on page, it's there. I'm going to remove everything from recordings because this part is going to be auto, auto populated where, uh, where needed. Okay, so let's uh, let's see what I've added. So, first thing first, uh, when the document is ready, so uh, when everything has loaded, um, pass a, a callback function to the ready uh, method, and I like to redefine jQuery as dollar sign variable because it's easier to write and faster to um, see. Okay, and implement anyway. Uh, I'm going to define a custom uh, variable called my recorder, which holds uh, some methods that we're going to use to start, stop uh, the recording, and save it locally. Uh, I'm going to uh, do so, like like this. So let me start from the bottom. Every time you click on the record button button the method in it is called from my recorder and the method in it um, gets the audio context it's either audio context or webkit audio context depending on your browser and stores it locally only once because it does this verification by null so if the con uh, the variable uh, context was already defined it is not redefined again okay so every time you press uh, the button the audio context is initialized you cannot automatically initialize the audio context in browsers because that would be a severe security issue um, browsers only allow um, registration or um, feed microphone feed if the user actually granted it by uh, an event like a click so this is why we're doing it here we're initializing the context on click but only as needed and only for the first time the user clicks. Now the button state defines whether or not the button um, was pressed and the audio is recording. And these double exclamation marks at the beginning of the expression that gets the data recording attribute means conversion to boolean. So all this does is convert this expression into a boolean, which is either true or false. So. We're starting with false, obviously, because we have no data recording set on our button. The button is plain and simple, no data recording attribute present at all. So button state begins as false. If we're in this state, uh, we're going to set the data recording to true, making it look red, as we've defined earlier in CSS, and we're going to start the recording. Okay, so we're going to call the method start. And the method start, uses the navigator media devices and calls something called user get user media uh, with the option to set audio to true and video to false so we're only capturing the audio feed from the user which is the microphone and when that happens when the stream was created it passes it along with a function which we're going to use here as a callback and we're storing this stream locally because we're going to use it later when we stop the recording and we're also storing an instance of stefino.github.io slash this slash recorder.js we're storing a, an instance of that when we click on the button which actually starts recording and it needs these two arguments okay and the method that begins recording is this one. My uh, recorder objects, recorder, recorder. Okay, so everything more or less clear or magical by this point. When you click the button, it becomes red and the browser starts recording. Okay, when we cl click the button again, because the data recording attribute was set to true here, we're going to go on the else branch 
and the data recording attribute is set to an empty string, which is basically equivalent to removing uh, the true statement. And we stop um, a recording, passing along an object, which is a selector we've made earlier for our holder, data uh, recordings, data role equals recordings. I'm passing this along, so I don't select it every time the user cl uh, set, uh, clicks on the button. This is a way of optimizing um, performance. It doesn't really matter here because it's only one element, but it's a good idea to uh, keep this in mind. Avoid using selects um, where you can over and over again. And now the stop function was defined here and this is the actual last element. Uh, it gets this list object, which is actually from our HTML uh, document div data role recordings. So this is passed as an argument. So we don't select it again and again. If everything went smoothly earlier and we have a stream, we're going to stop it. If everything went smoothly and we have a recorder and nothing through, through any exception, we're going to stop that recorder. And some simple, simple validation here, it's not actually perfect. We're uh, validating that the list object we have received earlier as an argument is actually an object. It's not null and its length is larger than zero. And now we're going to use, again, a library I didn't write, but I'm hosting, the recorder.js library. We're going to use an instance of that library called recorder stored in our objects here to call export WAV, which converts our audio recording into a WAV file and passes it along as a blob, which is basically a binary string. And now we're going to create a new URL uh, for this blob, which is um, an actual URL only accessible locally by you on your session of the browser. And this URL is going to then get passed along as a sor source attribute for uh, our audio object. So we're going to define an audio object as an audio with controls, and we're going to set the source to our URL generated earlier from, from the blob. And then we're going to create a download object which has that special character of an arrow pointing down. We're going to define the link to the same URL we've created earlier, and we're going to define this custom uh, HTML attribute, which forces the browser to change the uh, file name when downloading a file to what we have specified. And I set the download attribute to date UTC string with the extension wave or wav. Okay. And now I'm going to cre create the actual row, which is a div class row, as uh, we've uh, had, <laughs> as we've shown earlier. Okay, and inside of this class div class row, we're going to append the audio object and the download object. And when everything is done, we're going to append the holder object itself, which is this div class row, to the list of elements. And everything is actually done. So <laughs> when I press the stop button. Um, the recording is going to be appended to this data role recordings. And now let's uh, head on for a demo. So I've pressed the button. This is uh, the recording. I can move the button around the page. And when I, when I press the red button again, the recording stops and it's listed below uh, with the audio player and controls, all uh, gener generously created by Chrome. Um, the playback, uh, look ahead and all that and with our download button which actually downloads the wave file uh, locally on the browser on the uh, um, desktop or whatever client and now let's create another file just for kicks to see how this works blah 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 and there you have it and the smaller file one second and there you go. And if you want to uh, reset the whole thing, all you need to do is re reset or refresh the page and everything goes back to zero. You can now record a file and uh, set your um, thoughts to paper, <laughs> so to speak. Um, save them for um, posterity. And yeah, <laughs> really, I'm, I'm really out of ideas by now. Uh, this, this would have been basically a one hour tutorial and um, I think this is better. But anyway, if you have any questions or you're struggling with parts of the code, uh, don't hesitate to contact me uh, or ask in the comment section below. And if, if you have suggestions for future videos, um, please, again, go ahead and contact me or uh, use the comment section below. Um, like, share and subscribe. 
and don't forget you have the files listed in the description so you can go ahead and uh, copy paste <laughs> basically uh, the part that you need okay uh, thank you very much and i'll see you next time